Eminem. Man, the myth, the legend. Personal top five artist for me. Got some of his albums behind me, if you can see. Currently uh, ripping my jersey that I got from his concert when he toured with Rihanna a few years back. Now, let's get into this album. A lot of people didn't like it, you know, rightfully so. Me being one of them, some people praise it, stands. Um, first, I'd like to shout out to the promo of this album. I thought it was quite genius. He started it off uh, very intelligently with the, an ad uh, called Revival. On the website, he, he details certain symptoms that this drug would cure. A lot of funny, corny lines were set on there that relate back to his discography, back to certain lines on on his albums and songs, which I actually thought was, was quite genius. Interesting way to promote an album. Not sure if you can still call the number, visit the website, but if, if you can, I would really suggest tackling that. I called it, listened, it was kind of cool, you know? When I see an artist take promo very seriously, it's typically a good thing, especially with Eminem on his last album, Marshall Mathers LP2, where he brought the blonde back. He called it Marshall Mathers LP2, which, you know, Marshall Mathers LP1 was probably his best album, um, critically and for me as well. Now time to review this album. I'd say the easiest way for me to review this one would be the bad or the ugly. The alright, you need some improvement, and the fucking good. The ugly. A lot of this album's ugly, let me just tell you that straight up off the bat. The first single. Walk on Water, Beyonce. I didn't like it, but I'll say I wasn't too scared from this choice because Eminem has a history of, of uh, picking singles that he knows are more for pop, commercial, radio. I'm sure him and his team have both realized that, hence we have songs like Monster. We have songs like Love the Way You Lie, Ass Like That, Just Lose It, We Made You. Things that will go well with with both his pop and his commercial audience, and it'll make the hip hop heads go a little bit like this, but when the album comes, we know there's gonna be gems embedded throughout that whole piece. So with Walk on Water, I wasn't too upset with the Beyonce feature. The chorus boasts a very lame uh, lines in it where Beyonce talks about how she can walk on water. She's not Jesus. She can walk on water, but only when it freezes. It's like corny. What, what's the point? Eminem closes the verse with a very lame line where he talks about, Bitch, I wrote Stan. Like... Okay, we all understand Stan is one of the best songs ever made, right? It's one of hip-hop's best showcases of a story of lyricism. And he actually provided a sequel with it on Bad Guy off his last album, Marshall Mathers LP 2. But to keep boasting and bragging about this song and getting the dirt off your shoulder for this song, it gets corny. And it's like, when, when are you going to let this in the past? Remind me, Eminem. This sample. Does anyone like this song? Seriously. It's like the sample is talking to Eminem. Eminem's talking to the sample. A little like Run DMC with Peter Piper, how how uh, Rev Run and and Daryl McDaniels are spitting back and forth, but Eminem's doing it to the sample and it just doesn't work at all. What the shit did I just listen to? It was really bad. It actually sounds like Rick Rubin and Eminem wanted to do a continuation of Berserk. They saw Berserk was a hit and they wanted to capitalize on that and brought back Remind Me. Remind Me, unfortunately, does not do that. It actually is quite embarrassing. One of the worst songs on the album um, also totes a few vomit-worthy lines. <laughs> so Eminem says, because real tits are still fun, but everybody knows fake tits are still better than real ones. I actually have a question. Do people really think fake ones are better than real ones? Is that is that a thing? Is I would actually like to know more so than liking this album or disliking it. I want to know that. Like Home, Alicia Keys, Just Blaze and Eminem on production. Alicia Keys uh, does the chorus. I believe that Eminem is is, is more of a happy-go-lucky revolutionary on this song. He's 
not really going to go out there with a gun or or a blade or a torch and go in the streets and 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 provoke change. He's not going to do that with this type of message on this song. Whereas we saw him on the BET freestyle a few months back with his boys in the back posted up. He was actually pissed. He was out of breath. He seemed like he wanted change. He said, we fucking hate Trump. You know what I'm saying? He was doing that. And uh, a lot of people react to that in a crazy way. With Like Home, we're not seeing that at all. We're seeing a, a guy tweeting behind a computer hoping for change, not Eminem, who we're, who we're seeing in Mosh and on Encore. And we're seeing him saying, Mosh, fuck Bush. And he's mocking uh, George Bush with the shit upside down when he's reading it like an idiot in front of all the students at school. You know, that's what more of I was expecting on Like Home. Does it need to be old Eminem? No. Should it have some rage? It should. Bad Husband featuring the ex-ambassadors. Let me tell you, I was actually really happy when I heard the concept for this, not the song. I thought the song was executed quite poorly. However, let me tell you, the song in, in nature really kind of won me over because we, we've we all grown up with Eminem. We've all seen him mature. We've all seen him go into different parts of his life, some dark, some happy, more dark. Um, and it's really beautiful to, to see him apologize to Kim. He took a similar approach on his last album where he apologized to his mother on the song Headlights. Very beautiful, very deep, very meaningful. Uh, that song I'd give, you know, a B plus, an A minus, whatever. On this song, I believe the concept is really A material. The way Eminem actually laid it out and made it, X Ambassadors on the hook, I just thought... Come on, man. We got we got a D song out of an A concept. I would love him to kind of just do this again. Just push this to the side. It just wasn't strong. You know, the message was, however, where he's saying, how can he be a good dad and a, and a bad husband? It really makes you think, like, we've seen this guy kill his wife or heard him kill his wife on record with his baby daughter helping him. That's fucking crazy. And to see him make this, this step is just deep. Tragic endings. Skylar Grey. She's made a lot of features on Eminem albums. I'm not particularly a fan of Skylar Grey. I was a fan of Holly Brooke, who used to be Skylar Grey before she changed her name. Look into that. Um, I'm not really a fan of her. This song really sounds like a recovery throwaway. Uh, it wasn't recorded during the recovery era, but it really gives off that vibe. The song, I guess it shows some potential with some Eminem bars. However, Eminem also does provide some really weird and corny lines as well. I'll show you one. Since I'm a newer, she's a sewer, and this time this piece of shit's running through her. Ah, dude, I got a fart, nigga. <laughs> Eminem has always had corny lines, funny lines, lines that he has intended to make us laugh or cringe or look and be like, did he really just hear that? What the hell was that? He's one of those artists, so there's some that you're just kind of like, mm. Pop, that's what it is. Nowhere fast. Kehlani. <sighs> Eminem the collaboration we all wanted. I'm not gonna review this one. I'm not gonna, just listen to it, review it yourself. Heat, Eminem, Rick Rubin on production, another kind of failed hip hop, rock fusion, more of a mutation if you must say so. It doesn't work, more corny lines that, that he states. That's just a thoroughbred in me. Ain't a better breed. My dog thinks so too. Look at my pedigree. It's actually kind of funny. I'm not going to front. Rick Rubin, what are you doing on the production, my man? Uh, I liked what you did on MMLP2, as I previously stated. It was good. Maybe you saw the good reviews on it and you wanted to kind of go round two. I will, however, uh, give Eminem his props and do on the last 15 to 20 seconds of the song where he's kind of, it seems like he's freestyling a bit. It's going a little hard in the paint there for that short few second stanza. However, that does not help out the entire four plus minute track that we have had to endure. You know what I'm saying? Pink, 
Eminem. Not their first time on uh, record together with this song, Need Me. Uh, they've been on record before, once on Eminem's album Recovery, Won't Back Down. That was a little bit more of a stadium anthem, louder vocals, energize Eminem, louder pink. I can, I can vibe out to that one. I, I actually enjoyed that piece, although it was a little more poppy, it worked. Need Me is more of a pink song with Eminem as the feature. Um... She's singing and what have you for about two minutes. Eminem, I believe, sings with her for a little bit. He starts rapping after the two-minute mark. It's another one of those hip-hop moments. In Your Head, produced by Scram Jones. I wonder if Scram Jones actually picked this, this sample, because if he did, I'd be shocked. This cranberry sample, not a fan of it at all. Uh, it probably felt very good for Eminem to get these things off his chest. It sounds like he's been getting a lot of, a lot off his chest this whole album. Does it work? No. Do I wish it worked? Yeah. Duh. <laughs> what am I doing? <sighs> One of the problems I have with this album is that I'm so just lost in my uh, upsetness, if that's a word, with the production, with the features and what have you, that I don't even really listen to the lyrics. I'm I'm always listening to lyrics, but this album kind of prevents me from doing so. So I really had to listen to this album many, many, many times, more than I'd wished, to really write a review on this. And am I giving Eminem special treatment because he's in my personal top five listening to this multiple, 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 multiple times? Yeah, I am. Uh, is that fair? No, but it's necessary. You know, and with this many listens, it's fair to say that this album has many low points and few high ones. But let's get into the the better aspects of the album. It's getting better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, buddy, we're getting to some better music on this one. We got Believe, track two on the album, produced by the saving grace of this album, Mr. Porter. This song has a slower trap beat, uh, Mr. Porter laid for M. It's really good. Eminem actually does great. And this is, you're wondering, if you say it's really good, why is it in the all right section of the review? Reason being, one of the things that plagues this album is also choruses. And I, I've already kind of touched up on that, but this chorus, it kind of ruins the, the mood and the tempo of the song. It has grown on me more. Uh, still not a hitter, but it does have serious potential, you know. And Eminem this is this is in the beginning of the album where you're like shit maybe he's gonna pull off something here chloroseptic the song that's probably a lot of people stand out track for me i think the chorus needed a lot of work i actually i wish it was omitted i wish fresher was not on the album especially being the only hip-hop feature riddle me this why is fresher the only hip-hop feature on this album he just signed ws boogie West Side Gun, Conway, why don't you want to promote them? Isn't it like against your marketing model of Shady Records to put some other hip-hop artists when you have people ready to fucking spit flames on this shit? So that really upset me, especially when that said artist, Fresher, did not deliver. Instead, he kind of ruined the song with that pretty awful chorus. Eminem actually really goes in. His last verse especially, he's really tearing it up. He's fucking killing it. I'm going like... I'm going crazy. I'm like going crazy, but with replay value, it it's more down here than up here. Reason being because of that hook. Side note, that chloroseptic remix. Oh my God, he was dissing people like me. The people who who didn't like the album. The people who were who were dissing it, tearing it to pieces, analyzing. He was wrecking us a new ass, dude. I fucking ha! I loved it. Gay! We need that angry Eminem. You know, actually. We love happy Eminem. We want him to be happy. We've seen his struggles. We've heard his struggles. But we want angry Eminem on the mic. How beautiful was that for him to just fucking just unload on all of us who didn't believe in him? Untouchable. The first half I'm really not a fan of. Uh, it sounds quite preachy, a little corny. Inspiring, however, that, you know, he's actually using his voice for the better. Uh, I didn't really like the final product we got here. However, I'll say that the, the second beat when it's introduced, pretty sure Mr. Porter had 
a good deal with that beat, considering he's produced up to this point three good songs with Believe, Chloroseptic, and now Untouchable. Um, that second beat actually also allows Eminem to get his flow off a little bit more. He's rapping faster, he's switching up how he's delivering the, these bars. I'm, I'm actually wish that just the second part of the song existed because I'm sure it would have been one of the better songs on the album. A lot of y'all might be confused that I'm putting this on the all right section, but River featuring Ed Sheeran. I'm not going to play the song a lot. However, I do know that this song is a hit in the radio realm, in the, in the country realm, and the chorus actually isn't half bad. I think Ed Sheeran actually has a very beautiful voice. It's kind of cool. Am I going to listen to this song? No, not really. Do I see its potential? Yes. Hence why it's in the all right section of this one. I'm going to put the skit up in here. That revival interlude was cool. That little piano loop, the girl singing. I wish that kind of turned into something. It was sad that it was barely anything. And then it went to that shithole like home featuring Alicia Keys, that garbage. <sighs> Offended. Eminem. He's coming in, flowing and flowing and flowing and killing it. And I'm like, oh my God, this so far is the best song on the album. He's going he's gonna to kill it. He's going to do so good. And then you hear that chorus. And when I heard that chorus, it actually kind of took me back to my childhood when I was swinging at like pinatas and shit. Because that's exactly what I thought I was doing listening to this chorus. One thing I will say about the chorus, the end of it was awesome because you kind of hear the DJ scratching. <laughs> And then it comes right back into Eminem just wrecking this track, a new one. Um, this is one of those songs that I'll say, I'm sure it's going to go up in my ranking. Uh, I'm kind of like hypnotizing myself to really enjoy this song because it, the bars and his flow are so powerful that it's just a song that I, I want to love. I really want to. I'm forcing myself. I'm really just trying to, to love this. It sounds kind of stupid and a little demented that I'm doing this to myself, but that's just how good it, it could have been. The good. Here we go. We get framed. Frederick on production. Legendary production catalog. Check it out. Um, oh my god. So you hear this and you just start doing this. You're not even listening to the lyrics. You're just going like... <sighs> Frederick brought the best out of Eminem. Let me tell you, this song was like relapse era Eminem, except he took that accent and he fucking threw it in the garbage. And he is flowing, dude. His misogyny bars are on point. That sounded really messed up. Okay, let me, let's, let's rewind. Eminem is one of those artists that is so good when it comes to rapping about hurting people and misogyny and insults and things like that he's a little known for that maybe he doesn't want to be known for that but he's just so good at it and we're not over here endorsing these horrible acts and and things that people do but i guess it makes for good music and entertainment um he comes in here and he is just wrecking shit he is killing it the chorus is also quite good he doesn't mess anything up on the song. The execution is honestly quite flawless. One thing I, I guess I don't care for was how Tragic Endings was before it. The song after it was with Kehlani, Nowhere Fast, and Frames like the beautiful cream filling to that shit fuck Oreo outside, which was garbage. But you got that cream filling and you taste it and it's so good. Frame is, is one of Eminem's best songs. It sounds like it came out of Relapse. It was that good. Oh man, Castle, Eminem, he actually confirmed this to be true, the way he used to write letters before Haley was born and, and when, you know, after she was born, this is a beautiful song and you're like, the creativity this guy has, he could have made a fucking A plus album and he chose not to. <sighs> This song, it has the best feature on the album. The feature is uncredited. Her name, Liz Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, she has a soft, sorrowful voice, guitar building in the background as she's singing. Eminem chimes in with his singing. Eminem drops a verse, 
a letter that he wrote to Haley before she's born. Oh my God, this is this is writing right here. Goes to the chorus. He he now has a second letter. You know, after she's born, when he's releasing Infinite, and it's not critically acclaimed. It, it the songs are more underground oriented. And then the third letter, 2007, 2007. He's reached fame, best best selling artist, man. And here he is, juggling pills, swallowing them, falling to the floor to conclude the track. Oh my God, you hear this and you just wanna rewind it. You don't wanna go to the next song. Oh, and it continues into the next song, A Rose. This is Rick Rubin's best produced song on the album. I'd say large in part due to the fact that Castle is re-included into this. Oh my God, he's talking to Proof, talking to his mother, his daughters, Kim, Nathan. And he takes it back to that 2007 uh, overdose. Uh, thankfully, he survived, of course, um, and whatever. But he takes it back, and he, and he wants to kind of hop in the time machine, take a little time to look back in time and change that. So instead of that castle ending where he swallows the pills and falls to the floor, he takes those pills, he flushes them down the toilet, and he changes history. And what a fucking perfect closer to such a fucking crappy album. I just wish that he took like five songs out of this album and put them on something else and Revival could have been forgotten about so he would have gotten like a, a sick-ass EP. I guess it's time to rank this thing, huh? This is his worst album. I think it's quite clear to say there's no really going around it. If you disagree, I want to hear that. I really do. I would love to respond to that. We can go and message and stuff and whatever. Let's, let's do it. Um, I'm giving this, well, let's say I'm making a scale, and I want to call it the body bag scale. You know what I'm saying? I'd add 10 body bags. I'm giving this like a four. I'm giving it a four body bags out of ten. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if an album doesn't even get to five body bags, are we calling it a body bag? Because it's really more of an embarrassment. So let's really give this six tissue boxes out of ten. Because it would be the inverse of body bag. Because you, you get it. Y'all y'all know math, I hope. So I was not amused by this. Choruses, execution, production, features were all really parts that halted the project that just really hurt it. So that's what I'm going with. What do y'all think? You think I'm right? Think I'm wrong? Think I'm a fucking moron? <laughs> Let me know. I'm all for it. Let's let's battle. Let's debate in peace, whatever you want to call it. Don't forget to, uh, to drop that comment and give it a thumbs up if you agree. Subscribe. Uh, and, and I want to hear this. I, I really want to know what y'all think.